brethren. Good afternoon. Now, we're going to think this morning in the Gospel about three people that met the Lord Jesus Christ, that met the King in different circumstances. And I have three young men that are going to help me. So Jonathan is going to read for us from Mark chapter 5, and he will bring to us the story of the woman with the issue of blood. And then Joel will read to us from Mark chapter 10, and he'll bring us the account of blind Bartimaeus. And then finally, Abby will read for us in Luke chapter 19, and he'll bring us the story of Zacchaeus. So we're going to start with Jonathan. And after Jonathan's read, then Joel will read. And after Joel, Abby. Thank you, Jonathan. Jonathan, come up here, mate, so everyone can hear you. We've got the microphone here, so nice and clear. Thank you, boys. Now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And when Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Now they came to now they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you, and throwing aside his garment. He rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And imme immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. He entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich and was and he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and, save, and to save the lost. Thank you, boys. What great readers all three of you are. Eh? How well did they do? Well done. Now, when I was about seven, maybe eight, word came to our school that the Queen, Queen, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, was going to be visiting our town, the town where we lived. And not just our town, but other towns. And she would be visiting and, and passing through and the school said to us that we would all go out and we would be there and watch as this, the Queen passed by. Now, my parents were fairly easy to convince that we should have days off school. 
and probably why I couldn't read like these boys. So I convinced my mum that rather than going to school to maybe see a glimpse of the Queen, better if I go, they had a shop, better if I go to the shop with them because the Queen would pass that way anyway and I would see her. So why bother going to school and standing in a big line when the Queen's coming to where the shop is, I can have a day off and for some reason they agreed. So you know what happened? We went to the shop and the Queen passes by in her car and you know how much of the Queen I got to see? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> As I'm standing out the front of the shop waiting for my opportunity, surely the Queen will come and stop and talk to me and maybe she'll give me something. <laughs> but the Queen in her car and she zooms past and I did not even get a glimpse of her. Not even the... I'm sure she was doing that, but in my mind was, she's gone. So I go to school the next day, and what happened at school? Where the school was, the Queen didn't zoom past. What did the Queen do? The Queen stopped, and she got out, and she walked past, and she spoke to my classmates, and one of the girls in my class gave her flowers, and they had the opportunity of meeting the Queen. And I'd missed it. I had missed my chance to meet the Queen. And we have read this morning, these boys have read for you three accounts of people that would not miss their chance to meet the King. The Lord Jesus Christ would be passing and they would not allow him to pass by and to be missed. Now I want us to think that these three people each came with something different. Uh, the first in the story that we read, Jonathan read to us, was a woman that came to Jesus and she came, and I want us to think of her coming to meet Jesus, coming desperately to not let him pass by, and she comes with this understanding that she is at an end of herself. She comes to Jesus, and what did it say? Jonathan read for us that she had spent all that she had. She had nothing left. And she had suffered many things at the hands of the physicians, but she hadn't got, but got better. She had got worse. So she comes and she says, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, that's it. That's all I need. No more spending. No more suffering. No more many physicians. No more of her doing all that she can do. But she comes saying, there is nothing that I can do and there is nothing that I can bring. It is all about him and about touching the hem of his garment. And despite all that was going on that day and Jairus wanting things to be hurried along, she would stop and touch just the hem of his garment. Nobody in the crowd wanted this woman to be there. They didn't want her to be there. She's unclean. She has an issue of blood. And the last thing that they want, and especially Jairus wants, is for the Lord to be delayed in what he is doing. But this woman will not allow him to pass because she knows that she has a problem and there is nothing that she can do about it herself. She's tried that. Do you know, we have a problem and there's nothing that we can do about it ourselves. The problem is sin. And we try and fix it lots of different ways. Now, this woman tried to fix her problem with physicians and with spending and it didn't do any good. And people today try and fix their problem with sin with, mostly with good works. But sometimes they try and fix it by saying, what about my Christian family, my Christian home, my Christian school? And none of those things work. The second portion that we read, that Joel read for us, was about blind Bartimaeus. And the distinction that we have with him is that he came to the king of kings knowing who Jesus was. He came to call out. He says, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The promised one, have mercy on me. Now, there's a lot of people there that day. And he doesn't call to, to Pharisees, have mercy on me. He doesn't call to scribes and rulers, have mercy on me. He comes and he says, the son of David, specifically he comes to Jesus and he says, have mercy on me. And what did they tell him? They said, hold your peace. He doesn't want to be bothered with you. You're a blind beggar. And the master has no time for someone like you. You're the last person he wants to stop and speak to. 
You're of no importance. You're of no value. You can't even see. You've got nothing to offer him. You can't even feed yourself without people giving you money. What do you have to bring to Jesus? But he cried out all the more. And he wouldn't hold his peace because he knew that Jesus was passing by and he would not miss his chance to meet the king. Jesus, have mercy on me. We've all got a problem like this woman with the issue of blood and nothing we can do about it ourselves. And the only person that can fix it is the Lord Jesus Christ. This one that Bartimaeus would cry to, have mercy on me, Jesus, nobody else. Now, the last passage that Abby read for us was of Zacchaeus. And he came to Jesus initially maybe, maybe even a bit curious as to who Jesus was. But he comes and he will not miss his chance. But what's the problem Zacchaeus has got? Not very big. He is small of stature. But he won't allow Jesus to go by without seeing him, without seizing him. So he climbs that tree and he is, no doubt, he is amazed when Jesus stops at the very spot where he is. And Jesus calls to him, calls him by his name and he says, Zacchaeus, come down. I'll be up a tree, but come down, because today I must abide at your house. Now, what's the distinction about how Zacchaeus comes? Well, Zacchaeus comes repenting. Do you remember when Abby read that to us? He read that Zacchaeus said that if he has, he said he was giving away half of his money to the poor, and if he had defrauded anybody, if he had taken anything from anybody by false accusation, he would restore fourfold. He's not going to be left with much, is he? Already half he gives away. And then he's restoring what he has stolen four times over. So this person who comes initially as a person who is rich, a person who's a cheat, and a person who places money and power above all else, by the end of this day, he is repentant, completely changed. And he says, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. I don't care about them anymore. And the things that I have done wrong, I'll make them right. Because later the Lord would say, salvation has come to this house. Three people that had an opportunity to meet the king. And they wouldn't allow it to pass by. This woman, leave him alone. And the Lord even would say, who touched me? And the disciples are saying, you're asking who touched you in this press? All these people that are here. And you are saying, who touched me? Just let this woman go. Leave her be. There's no reason to spend time with her. But he said, no, someone touched me with intent. Someone reached out and touched me with purpose. And I felt the virtue. He felt the power go out of him. This woman touched him with a, a, a reaching out. We sometimes sing reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. You'll find he's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. That's what the woman did. She didn't come to Jesus saying all the things that she can do for him. She didn't come saying all the things that she can give to him. She reached out and she touched the very last piece, the very bottom, the most worthless piece of his garment, the dirtiest piece, the piece that would be dragging in the dust. That's all she had to touch of him. And she was made a little better? No. She was better for a few weeks? No. She was made whole. She was made as good as new. She was completely healed. And the Lord Jesus Christ was able to miraculously save her. Bartimaeus, hold your peace. And maybe someone here, maybe people are saying, you know, Jesus doesn't want people like you. He doesn't want people like you. You're just a kid. He's just, you're just small. What can you do for Jesus? Maybe somebody else here is saying, Jesus doesn't want people like you. Not the life you've lived. Not the things that you do. Hold your peace and leave him alone. Blind Bartimaeus would cry out to the only one who could save him. And they would tell him to be quiet. He would say, no, I will not miss my chance to meet the king. And he would say, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Is there someone here today who's never cried out? Who has never come to the Lord in repentance as Zacchaeus did? Is there someone who has never seen the king pass by the Lord Jesus Christ and you've just reached out and touched him? And to you, he's not your king. He's someone you know a bit about. He's someone whose words you know memory verses about. 
but you don't have a personal relationship with him, can I say to you today, don't let the king pass by. The Lord has come to seek and to save those that are lost. That is the last verse that Abby read. Why did the Lord Jesus Christ come? He came to seek and he came to save those that were lost. Don't miss your chance. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. Those that come unto him, he will never, ever, ever cast away. Let's pray. Oh, Father, we just give thanks for the great salvation that you have offered. We think of those that would come to you in scripture in different ways and at different times. And they would seize their opportunity, not allowing the Lord to pass by. But a father, the Lord would stop. And he would take time with those that others hated, that others would try to silence or try to hurry. He would stop even at the foot of a tree for a man that had climbed it and call him by name. Father, we thank you that we can understand today that all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, we thank you for the reading that these three young boys have done today. We ask that you would bless them, that you would guide them, and that they too would grow in the knowledge and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for the rest of us, O oh Father, we pray that every person here would know the Lord Jesus Christ, not only as the King of kings and Lord of lords, but would know him as their personal saviour. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.